Madeline, I'm not trying to portray you as a prophet of doom, but I do want you to respond to the following prophet of doom. You'll remember back in, uh, not, not because you were there, but because you've learned about it, I'm sure, back in 1798, Thomas Malthus expressed doubt that the agricultural production could meet the needs of England's then 8 million people. Uh, the population of England is now 50 million, and they don't have any food shortages. 1969, hang on, this is a big wind-up here, eventually leading to a question. 1969, Paul Ehrlich speculated that food shortages and other environmental problems caused by overpopulation would cause the population of the world to collapse to 1.5 billion by 1985. He was wrong about that. For 200 years, here's the point, people are predicting the imminent end of human progress due to overpopulation, and for 200 years they've always been wrong. So why should we listen now? Well, I would say it's because we have managed to increase our numbers to 6.7 billion and acquire a high, uh, comfortable style of living by drawing down our natural capital. Our oil supplies, on which everything depends, virtually everything depends, we've probably used up half of the oil that's in the ground, and we're willing to destroy the environment of northern Alberta to get back at you know, low-quality oil that's really hard to get at and everything like that. Um, we have, as I said, we've depleted the fisheries, we've taken over one-third of the land on the surface of the earth, and the remaining land is not suitable to agriculture. When we try to convert it to agricultural uses, we just cause deforestation and erosion. Already, um, water supplies are drying up. One billion people live in countries with water shortages and depending on which projections. Here's, here's where the moderator jumps in and says, yep. all of what you say may be true, but human ingenuity has seemed to muddle us through Humans, over the uh, well, last couple of hundred years. Of the, of the That's right. I mean, human ingenuity is a huge part of the equation that was not, I don't, wasn't fully taken into account by Paul Ehrlich. Um, and so, yeah, technology has enabled us to, you know, to maintain a much larger population than we otherwise would have been able to. But, but are you saying we can't... Re Hang on a sec. Stephen, are you saying we can't rely on that anymore to get us through? Well, I think, you know, we, luckily these days, and it wasn't true in Ehrlich's time, but luckily now we've got a type of analysis called ecological footprint analysis that, uh, that Mathis and his colleague at University of British Columbia, Bill Rees, pioneered, that shows that, that, the, you know, that the, the bio capacity of the planet is not adequate to support the current global population. We've got about a 25% overshoot and it's getting worse every year. We're eating into the natural capital of the planet. We've got to change that, or else, really, we will, we will face some ecological thresholds that will be most unpleasant. Jeb, do we have to start listening to the prophets because, of doom, well, so to speak? You know, I, let, let me just pick up on the point of the ecological footprint analysis, and then maybe Mattis can add, add to it. But uh, I looked at three studies, three ecological footprint analysis, one of a North, typical North American, uh, city of 350,000, an Indian city of the same size, and a Delhi slum dweller. And if you look at the unit of consumption of a Delhi slum dweller as one, the average Indian is consuming 350,000 more times that person. The average North American is consuming 3.7 million times more than the average Delhi slum dweller. So what does that tell you about what our problem is? I mean, we should we should all be slum dwellers. No, well, I don't think that's no. I, I, it's quite obvious. Our the, the solution actually the slum dweller is doing much better than he or she was doing in the countryside, why, which is why they put up with the indignity of living in the slum. But the fact of the matter is this massive factor difference between what we consume and what this added uh, uh, slum dweller in India is consuming is the real issue that we've got to come Less than two minutes to go. Bruce? Well, I would just say that we dismiss the prophets of doom at our peril. I mean, you cannot have exponential uh, population growth. Um, it's a matter of choosing your priorities and where the, uh, where the focus should be. And I would suggest that today, in the tar sands, we took a million cubic meters of fresh water out of the ecosystem, never to be replaced, poisoned forever. In the course of this show, we lost 60 football fields of boreal forest. There are other issues that are, in fact, going to kneecap us in a shorter time period than ongoing population growth. So it is part of the problem. We can't dismiss the doomsayers, but right now we really have to come to terms with climate change. Mattis, give us the last 30 seconds. Uh, let's remember that the food prices have nearly doubled in the last year or so. Um, hundreds of millions of people right now are affected by these issues. Um, there's enormous human suffering involved if we don't address ecological limits. We need both to address consumption and population. Madeline, if you can do it in 20 seconds, I'll give it to you. 
We, both, we need to address population and consumption, and that means we need to address population, which is, is what we have been ignoring for, for so long. And we, will, we do have to recognize that we have the same needs as other species. And, and what is the morality? We talk about morality, but what is the morality of leaving a depleted planet for future generations and destroying so many other life forms? Madeline, that's the clock, and I thank you very much for finishing that answer when you did. I thank everybody for joining us for a very vigorous discussion tonight. From Oakland, California, Matis Wackernagel from Global Footprint Network in Ottawa, Stephen Hazel of the Sierra Club, Madeline Weld from the Population Institute of Canada here in studio, Bruce Cox from Greenpeace, Jeb Brugman from Global Legacy Foundation. Thanks very much, everybody. You've enjoyed it.